In 2022, I read a lot of books. I don't remember the exact number, but it was around 50. It was more books than I'd ever read in a year, ever. And I realized that year that a five point rating is not quite enough, or at least there are some books that stand out from all the others, even stand out from all the five star reads for me. Books that just blew my mind or changed the way I saw the world or were completely unforgettable that I found myself mentioning in like every single conversation I ever had. So I updated my rating scale and in 2022, I had six star reads. There were only two of them. It was Stylish Academic Writing by Helen Sword and Daring Greatly by Brené Brown. This year I realized that these special books are beyond a rating system. They're five-star reads, sure, but they're something else. They are unicorns. They are that rare. So nowadays, in my own personal rating system, I just put the emoji of a unicorn next to these books so that they stand out and I remember how special they are. In this video, I want to share with you the four books that have been unicorns for me so far in 2023, plus two honorable mentions that were five-star reads and I really wanted to share with you. Unicorn number one, A Gentleman in Moscow. In 1913, Count Rostov wrote a political poem. So when the revolution happened, although he was supposed to be sentenced to death, they took pity on him because of this revolutionary poem. So instead of killing him, he simply got house arrest. And at the time he was living in the Metropole Hotel, but they moved him from his fancy room in the hotel to this like small closet on the top floor where he had almost no space in which to live his life. And this book tells the story of him living out the rest of his days inside the Metropole Ho Hotel. At first he thinks he's going to get by by just going through his daily routine. He's going to wake up, he's gonna do his stretches, he's going to eat his food, etc. But then he meets a nine-year-old girl who has a key to get into any room in the hotel and he spends his time getting into all sorts of mischief instead. What really stood out for me in this book were the quotes and I'm going to give you quotes from each of the unicorns on this list because that is sometimes what makes a book Look really great for me is it has lines that stand out and stick with me but this one in particular has so many good quotes and like quotes to live by so I want to give you a couple of them imagining what might happen if one's circumstances were different was the only sure route to madness if patience wasn't so easily tested then it would hardly be a virtue for when life makes it impossible for a man to pursue his dreams he will connive to pursue them anyway and in the end, it has been the inconveniences that have mattered to me most. The next outstanding book that I want to share with you is Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. It's set in the 50s and 60s, and it follows Elizabeth Zott, who is a scientist who learned chemistry through self-study. Now she works at Hastings Research Institute, where she meets the love of her life, Calvin Evans. Theirs is a love story for the ages, but Elizabeth doesn't simply want to be remembered as Mrs. Calvin Evans. Unfortunately, women weren't as respected in those days, and everyone assumes that her research advances are actually her husband's genius. So when Elizabeth is offered a high paying position as the star of a cooking show, she takes the job, but she doesn't want to teach women how to heat up soup in the microwave. She wants to teach them the basics of chemistry so that their knowledge of the foundations of the world can propel them into self-actualization. And this is a case where the character teaching her viewers how to self-actualize is also Bonnie Garmus teaching her reader how to self-actualize. So I got a lot out of this book. I think about it all the time. Here is a quote that really stood out to me. People will always yearn for a simple solution to their complicated problems. It's a lot easier to have faith in something you can't see, can't touch, can't explain, and can't change, rather than to have faith in something you actually can. Oneself, I mean. Next up is actually a nonfiction, and that is Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer. In Braiding Sweetgrass, Kimmerer tries to braid academic, Western, scientific understandings of the world with indigenous wisdom and the teachings of plants. She believes that our knowledge of the world needs to emerge from multiple diverse epistemologies. Indigenous wisdom should not threaten Western science and vice versa. We can learn and grow from the best parts of both. And here's a quote that inspired me from this text. Our toddlers speak of plants and animals as if they were people extending to them self and intention and compassion until we teach them not to. We quickly retrain them and make them forget. When we tell them that the tree is not a who, but an it, we make that maple an object, 
We put a barrier between us, absolving ourselves of moral responsibility and opening the door to exploitation. Saying it makes a living land into natural resources. If a maple is an it, we can take up the chainsaw. If a maple is a her, we think twice. This book is such a great resource. I have taken so many notes on it and still need to take many more. But if you don't have the time to take notes after reading a book like this, then I recommend the app Short Form. It's a book summary app, but also in the book summaries, you are given extra information about the author, about the context of the book, about other books that are similar to this one or that can comment further on the themes within this book. And Braiding Sweetgrass is available as a summary on on the app short form. So if you've read this book or you're going to read this book and you want to get more out of it and you want to relearn those lessons, then you can go to short form and check out that summary. I've got a link for a free trial in the description box below, as well as a discount on an annual membership of like 20%. And using affiliate links like that really helps out my channel as well. And my final unicorn that I've read this year, which I mentioned in my previous vlog video, which is A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Ozeki. This one I read while I was on holiday so I haven't even really had a chance to go through and find quotes or make a summary of it. And I probably won't. I think I just want this one to live inside of me and the experience of reading it on the beach while relaxing and uh, learning everything this book has to offer was just incredible. I don't know if I want to ruin that by getting all academic on it. But this book alternates chapters between a teenage girl named Now who's living in Japan and a woman named Ruth who's living in BC. Ruth is a novelist, but she's trying to write her memoir when a little lunchbox shows up on the shores of British Columbia containing a journal that is written by Now, the Japanese girl. So alternating chapters, we get Now's perspective from back in time a little bit, and then we get Ruth's perspective of reading Now's experiences. And basically what Now is trying to do with her journal is document the life and thoughts of her great-grandmother, who is a 104-year-old Zen Buddhist nun. And we get a lot of teachings from the great-great-grandmother in this text. There's also a little appendix that teaches you about Schrodinger's cat, names of temples, quantum mechanics, and Zen moments. So there's a lot going on in this book, lots of spiritual and and scientific ways of understanding the world and just how to get by living our lives. I'll share with you a quick quote from Appendix A, Zen Moments. A moment is a very small particle of time. It is so small that one day is made up of 6,400,099,980 moments. And finally, on to two honorable mentions. The first one is The Sound of a Wild Snail Eating by Elizabeth Tova Bailey. I read this one at the library, so I don't have the physical book, but this is a nonfiction. It's a memoir, kind of, where Bailey contracted some mysterious illness after a trip, and it rendered her bedridden for years. So one day, a friend of hers brought over a woodland snail so that Bailey had something to look at and take care of while she was healing. At first, this snail sat in a pot and ate paper, but eventually she got at a terrarium and brought in the woods for the snail to explore. So this book is her observations of the snail over the course of months due to her sickness, and it's also the research she did about snails to accompany her observations of this one snail. And here's a quote from that book. How can any species, even our own, ever fully fathom by what means another species or animal group interacts? And finally, my second honorable mention of the year so far is Happy hour. Again, I read this one from the library. This book is a series of diary entries from a single summer in the lives of two girls subletting in New York City. They are being charged way too much for rent, they can barely make it by, and they are not legally allowed to work in the U.S., and so they have to take odd jobs throughout the summer pay that pay in cash to try to continue to pay rent and have a good time this summer. Really, I'm giving this one an honorable mention because of the intense vibes it gave me, and if you're watching this video when it comes out in the summertime, this is a perfect time to read this book. The descriptions of the summer in New York, the like sticky, sweaty nature of it, them like jumping between nightclubs and the market and odd jobs and men's houses and whatever is so visceral and immersive, especially because it's all written in first person. So I highly recommend this one if you want to live vicariously through two 21-year-old girls who are living in New York 
and going to parties and just trying to get by in one hot summer. And I'll give you two quotes from this book. I realize now, the older you get, the harder it is to be impressed because people make you feel ashamed of ever being impressed by anything at all. I keep many glowing remarks to myself because of this. I'd heard whispers that she was a pathological liar. At first, the assessment seemed unfair and malicious. But over time, I realized people don't just call people pathological liars for no reason. And those are six books that really impacted me this year. Four of them are what I call unicorns. They stand out that distinctly from the crowd of books that I have read. I look forward to updating you at the end of the year. We'll see if any of these four books get sort of pushed out for my favorite book of the year. If I had to pick a favorite so far, Ooh, oh, that's really difficult, um, but it's definitely either Lessons in Chemistry or Braiding Sweetgrass. Both of those were absolutely incredible. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to check out short form, you can use my affiliate link in the description box below for a discount and a free trial, and I'll see you in another video soon. Bye!